الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم لك الحمد وإليك المشتكى وبك ثقة وعليك تكلان ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم لا سهل لما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My brothers and sisters, I start by praising Allah Almighty and sending blessings and salutations upon our beloved Messenger Muhammad. This is our final session uh, with regards to Surah Al Kahf. And today we're going to be talking about another story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in this chapter. And that is the story of the two gardens. Now, this story is all about the fitna of wealth and money and income and how. It can possibly corrupt you and that the right relationship between you and whatever Allah bestows upon you of wealth is one of shukr and gratitude. Allah tells us a story about two men and one of them was a believer and the other wasn't and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala both gave them both gave them wealth and how they each acted and reacted to it. It is a very profound story really and the main lesson that I want to take away from and we all should take away from is that no matter what we are given in this world, it is a fitna, it is a test. And Allah will look at how you will react. Allah will look at how you will react. So when Allah makes you rich, or not even rich, if you're well off, or you have something, if you're not poor, Allah will look at what you're doing with the wealth that Allah has given you. Are you someone that gives charity? Are you someone that does the obligations of uh, feeding those that you are, should be feeding and helping and, and providing for or giving the zakat or giving the zakat al-fitr in Ramadan or helping the poor and the needy are you someone that is giving the haq to those who uh, d deserve it are you fearing Allah with regards to what Allah has given you because this is the test ikhwani fillah and this wealth that you have this money that you have the car that you have the, the anything good that Allah has given you can be a means for you to go to Jannah it can also be a means for you to be punished. And this is a decision we all have to make. And this is why many of the good deeds that we do, as it relates to the wealth Allah gives us, should come from a place of gratitude. Oh Allah, thank you for giving me this, and I will show you my gratitude by number one, saying Alhamdulillah, saying Ashukurillah, thanking Allah, and number two, also showing Allah that I am grateful by helping those in need. When Allah helped you, you need to help others. This is what the believer does, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a hadith Qudsi ibn Adam, unfiq, unfiq alayk. Give and I will give you. So this is, should be the behavior and the character of the believer. Now here we have a story of two men. Imam al-Qurtubi in his tafsir, and Imam al-Qurtubi in his tafsir is uh, a, a profound tafsir that we should all benefit from. He mentions the backstory uh, to this uh, qissa. And what you will learn from the Quran is that the Quran doesn't always, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran doesn't always tell us all the details. Allah doesn't tell us the story from the beginning until the end. Rarely does he do that. Only a few places will you find a complete story told. The reason for this is because a lot of times when you look at the whole story, uh, a lot of it isn't of fa'idah or of benefit. Allah will tell us the main things that we need to take away from, the main lessons. The main lessons that you need to take away from, you will find it directly in what is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf. But some of our scholars of tafsir will give you the backstory, will give you more context to give you a better understanding. But if we just read the ayats here, that would have been sufficient for us. Nonetheless, the Imam al Qurdi mentions that they, this was revealed over the story of two men. Now, these two men, they used to work together and they were shuraka, meaning they uh, worked together and they owned a business or a trade or, or a farm together. And then they gained profit. And the profit they both gained was, like he mentions, 3,000 dinar or dirham. Now, each one, they did something different with the money they got. The one who was a believer, he took 1,000 and he freed with that 1,000 uh, as many uh, slaves that he could. So he bought people that were in servitude and he freed them. That's 1,000 gone. And the other 1,000, he bought clothes with it and gave it to people that are in poverty and managed to clothe those who didn't have clothings. And the last thousand, he gave it also to the poor. And he also mentioned that when a masjid, he built a mosque. And then he had nothing left. The other person, he didn't do any of that. 
he invested it in land and in cattle, he married, and he all benefited from this money himself. And he built himself a great wealth. And Allah talks about or references exactly what he was given and how this wealth it produced for him in this, these verses that we're going to recite. Now the earlier man, the believer, he now doesn't have any income and he used all of his money. So he needs to work and he comes to his friend. He comes to his friend and he asks him, uh, can I work for you? Now that you have all of this wealth, can I work for you perhaps? And he, then the man starts mocking him. And he says, but we had the same amount of money. What did you do with your part? And he said, I, did, I gave it away and I, I bought with it something better. And he's hoping that Allah will reward him for the good that he did. This is when he starts saying to him, wait, you believe in that nonsense? You believe in the hereafter? I don't even think there is a qiyamah. I don't even think an hour is going to happen. Something that will be referenced in these verses as well. And then he starts mocking him and, 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 and boasting of what he has. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us their story here. Allah starts by saying, وَضْرِبْ لَهُ مَثَلًا رَجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَادِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلٍ وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعًا Allah says, and give the parable or put forward to them the example of the two men. One of them, we had given him two gardens. So Allah gave him how many gardens? Two gardens. And Allah mentioned these gardens were gardens with grapes. So they were, so he had the best types of fruits, grapes. وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلٍ And we surrounded or bordered this garden with uh, date palm trees. So you have date palm trees surrounding his uh, grapes and, and his crops. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعًا And between these we put crops. So other types of crops were also growing for him. Then Allah says, كِلْتَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ آتَتْ أُكُلُهَا Both of these gardens would bring forth its produce. So it wasn't like sometimes it will produce and other times it wouldn't. Sometimes he could harvest and other times he couldn't. Like most farms and most gardens are. No, every time he would get the full measure. Allah says, right? So never does it uh, uh, reduce. It's always given its full measure. And then Allah mentions that And in between. Now what do you need? What do crops and date palm trees and grapes, what do they need? They need water, right? And rainwater is usually not reliable because sometimes it rains and other times it doesn't, right? So this is something that might be a reason why these crops might not grow. You might not have water, but Allah said, وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهْرًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gushed forth in the midst of this garden a river. Question, who is providing him the grapes, the palm trees, the, the river that is gushing forth, the crops? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is who is getting all of this, by the way. This is the man we referenced earlier who uh, invested in all of this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرْ فَقَالِ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرْهُ And this man, he had property and fruit and he benefited. كَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرْ فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ And he said to his sahib, to his friend, this is the companion, this is the other man that we told, that we spoke about, the one who gave everything away for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says to him, Earlier we mentioned that he was boasting. And he did boast. Allah says here that he said, I have more wealth than you. And I am stronger than you. I have more children than you. I have more noble, I'm more noble of lineage. All of this is referenced here. So he is now boasting of his wealth, of his children, and all of this. Allah then mentions his state. So this boastful, proud man, he enters into his garden. He enters into his garden. While he is in a state of wronging himself, in a state of pridefulness and disbelief. He walks into his garden. And then he starts saying, I do not think that this will ever perish. I don't think it would ever perish. Why would I give this away like the other man did? Why would I give my wealth away? I don't think that I will ever lose any of this. SubhanAllah. He said, And I do not think that the hour will be established. Meaning, I don't think the hour will come. I don't believe in a hereafter. It's all about the dunya and the dunya I have. It's all about this world 
competition in this world and I have the best. It is so, so many of us today believe that, that the main goal is to life is to get rich, to earn more. This is your, what you strive towards, this is what you think about, and that's what preoccupies your mind. Completely ignoring that that is not the reason why we are brought into this world. This is not the most important thing. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. What matters is the, what kind of person you are and how you follow the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rich people and poor people, this is of the qadr of Allah. Allah makes some rich and Allah makes some poor. And all of this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, look at, the, look at the wording. Allah says, We gave to one of them two gardens. This is not something that you just earned yourself. Every penny you have, every penny you have, every wealth you own, this is from Allah. Because Allah is the razaq, the provider. And when you truly believe that and internalize that, you're not gonna become boastful or prideful because you know that in the end, it was handed to you. Now I'm not denying people work, but the opportunity to work, the ability to work, and everything else, it's from the tawfiq of Allah, from the qadr of Allah. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you realize that, you become thankful to Allah Almighty. But what did he say? He said, I don't think anything of this will ever perish. Number one. Number two, وَمَا أَظُنُّ سَاعَةَ قَائِمَةَ And I don't think the hour will come. Because, why is he saying this? If you think about it, why do people give their wealth away? Why do they give charity? Why do they do a lot of uh, uh, th this type of uh, work and this type of charity? It's because they want to be rewarded by Allah Almighty, because they believe in the hereafter. Now he is finding an excuse. No, 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 I don't have to give my wealth away. I don't have to do any of it. Why? Because I don't even believe in the hereafter. I'm going to enjoy this. It's never going to perish. It's never going to end. A very toxic mentality. And then he went even further and said, وَلَا إِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجْدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا He said, I don't think a hereafter is going to happen, but if I were to be returned to my Lord, then surely I shall find even better. His conclusion was, if I got all of this in this world, surely I deserve better if there is a next world. SubhanAllah. Now you'll find that his companion is going to speak to him. قَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُهُ وَهُوَ يُحَابِرُهُ Now his companion spoke to him and said, أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلًا لَكِنَّهُ وَاللَّهُ رَبِّي وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِرَبِّي أَحَدًا He said to his, his companion said to him, Do you disbelieve in the one who has created you? الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَابٍ from dust ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ and then created you from nutfa, which is what human beings are created of, sperm drops. How can you be boastful and prideful when you know what you were created from? ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلَا And then Allah is the one who fashioned you into this man. The ability you have, the strength you have, the intellect you have, all of this, the wealth you have amassed, it is from Allah. كُنْ شَاكِرًا Be grateful. وَلَا تَكُنْ كَافِرًا And do not be someone that is ungrateful. Another interesting thing is, he says, أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَابٍ Are you disbelieving in the one who created you? Because if he's denying the hereafter, if he's saying none of this of a parish, this is a certain amount to disbelief. But the scholars of Tafsir, they mention something that is very important. The word kafara or kafir, which means a disbeliever, it, its opposite is a believer, right? This is what Allah says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنُ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرُ فَمِنْهُمْ كَافِرٌ وَمِنْهُمْ مُؤْمِنٌ Among them is a believer and a disbeliever. If you wish disbelief, if you wish belief. So the opposite of kufr is iman. But that's not the only. Kufr is also used denying the blessings that Allah has given you. Well, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ So the opposite will be shukr. Among the opposites of kufr is iman and another opposite of kufr is shukr. So disbelief and belief but also denying and being ungrateful and being grateful. So he's saying, أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَابٍ Are you being ungrateful to the one who created you from dust and from uh, nutfah and has fashioned you into a man? Are you being ungrateful? This, all of this was given to you by Allah Almighty. Recognize that and be someone that is shakur, grateful. What does Allah say? لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you're grateful, if you're thankful, 
if you recognize the one who gave you these blessings, the Mun'im, Allah Almighty, I will give you even more. Wala in kafartum. And if you do kufr, which in this context doesn't mean disbelief, but means what? If you deny, if you're ungrateful, if you think this is all you. And indeed my punishment is severe. So, this man is being boastful, prideful. He's uttering statements of disbelief, saying, I don't think there is going to be a day of judgment or an hour. And if it does, then I surely will be given more. He has this false thinking of, if I'm rich in this world, I should be rich in the next world. Not understanding that in the next world, currency is what? What is the real currency in the next world? It's your good deeds. It's your salah. It's your zakat. It's your kindness to your parents. It's your neighborliness to your neighbors. It is the good statements that you have said. The smiles that you have put on other people's faces. This is what matters. Your ibadah, your worship, your faith and your iman. Then the other person, the believer, he starts admonishing and advising the man, the boastful man, and saying, He said, But why didn't you just, when you enter into your garden, why didn't you say, MashaAllah? Wouldn't it be better for you to say, MashaAllah? It was better for you to say when you entered into your garden, that all of this is from the will of Allah. MashaAllah. La quwwata illa billah. There is no might and no power except Allah's. In tarani ana aqalla minka malan wa walada. If you perceived me to have less wealth, less wealth than you and less children, you should have recognized that it was your Lord that gave you this. You should have recognized that it was Allah that blessed you with this. And you should have said, MashaAllah. La quwwata illa billah. All of this is MashaAllah. All of this, the word MashaAllah is often used nowadays. It's important you understand the meaning of this word. MashaAllah means that which Allah wills comes to pass. Or this is what Allah willed. Right? So, what you earn is MashaAllah. What you have is MashaAllah. Right? And when you see a good blessing, a lot of people say, MashaAllah, you got married. MashaAllah. Right? Which is fine because that's true. It is what Allah willed. But if you want to make dua for the person, you say, Barakallahu laka, may Allah bless it for you. Right? Uh, this is why the Prophet said in the narration, Barik lahu. Uh, ask Allah to bless it for them, right? Yes, it is, mashallah, but also say, uh, Barakallahu lak, Barakallahu feek, may Allah bless it for you. La quwwata illa billah, there is no might and there is no power but with Allah Almighty. We don't have any power, we don't have any wealth. And this is something that we all have to understand and appreciate. And when you do, you realize that true power lies in Allah and you will understand that you're going to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, the friend said, wouldn't it have been better for you? This is all Allah's will. There is no power but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you see me as having less in wealth and in children. Then this man starts saying, فَعَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يُؤْتَنِي خَيْرًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ مِنْ جَنَّتِكَ وَيُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهَا حُسْبَانٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتُصْبِحَ صَعِيدًا زَلَقًا He said to him, it may be that my Lord will give me, it could be that my Lord will give me something that is better than your garden and will send on your garden a husband from the sky and will become a barren and slippery land. So now he's saying, watch out. These types of statements that you're making, they may result in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking it away from you. What did, was the verse we read earlier? If you're grateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more. And if you are someone that is ungrateful, then Allah's punishment is severe. Allah's punishment doesn't only happen in the hereafter. Allah might punish you in this world by taking away from that which you were not grateful for. And what happened to him? So he said, a husband, a husband, the scholars say, is something that descended from the sky, muramun min as It could be a lightning bolt, a sa'iqa. It could be anything, something that, it, 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 clouds, anything. But what happened was, and we'll find out, they said that it may result in this beautiful garden turning into a barren wasteland. Sa'idan zalaqa, that is slippery. And then he said, or the water thereof, will become deep sunken underground. So this water that's gushing forth, it might just retreat. 
أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا and then you will not be able to get that water back now what happened what the prediction or the dua against this man it came true when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ two words وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ and his crops were surrounded subhanallah ف, that's all Allah tells us his crops were surrounded they were destroyed فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّ أَحَدَا Now he started worrying, now he started becoming sad, now he started regretting saying يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ He started turning his hands, saying it's over. Uh, and then Allah mentions that فأصبح وهي خاوية على عروشها it got completely destroyed خاوية على عروشها is a statement that is quite often used it means when it collapses the roof comes down when the, literally the house comes down his garden got destroyed and then he said يا ليتني لم أشرك بربي أحدا I wish that I did not uh, give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any partners would it that I had not ascribed partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah says وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ فِيَةٌ يَنْصُرُورُهُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مُنْتَصِرًا Allah mentioned that he did not have any group of men to help him against Allah who can help you against Allah when you're ungrateful when you say these types of statements Allah is the greatest helper the believers they will get Allah's help those who deny will not وَمَا كَانَ مُنْتَصِرًا then Allah says هُنَالِكَ الْوَلَايَةُ لِلَّهِ الْحَقْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ حُقُبًا Finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that indeed the wilaya belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala true power, true authority, true kingdom, superiority belongs to Allah Almighty هُوَ خَيْرٌ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ حُقُبًا So it is when you are believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the other man when you give sadaqah, when you do good this is when you get good الْجَزَاءُ مِنْ جِنْسِ الْعَمَلِ Now this story, ikhwani fi Allah what is the main lessons we learned from it? We learned, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your wealth. Don't let it be the cause of your destruction. Don't let it be the cause of your deviation. Don't ever think that what you've earned, you start beating your chest and saying, it's me that earned it. Always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lest you end up like this man. And remember when Allah said that those who are grateful, I will give more. And those who are ungrateful, Allah will take away. And, and there is a severe punishment for that as well. This man, his wealth led him to go astray. Don't let your wealth do the same. Be like the other man. Be like the one who believed in Allah, who gave it away in sadaqah, who worked for his akhirah. Jazakumullah khair. Hada akhir da'wan alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.